regrets. And there are things we look back and we're like, man, we probably should have done it that way. Mm -hmm. We didn't know any better. And Oh, the revolution, man, right? Much like in a startup. Yes, man, and, and let's get some of our old soldiers back out. Musicians to be professional. They know how to talk. To help them wake up happy. It's not about it. a rectangle and a price. All right, y'all, we're tuning in for another episode of Baked Out Radio Show. I am your host, and I have Melissa Loggins, who is actually in Cummings, Georgia. My first, uh, what is it? Um... What is it? my first interview that I'm doing via Zoom and Podmatch that is actually in the state of Georgia? Everybody else has been outside of the state, you know, and outside of the actual country too. I've been, I've met uh, some people in Greece and all that stuff. But let me give y'all a little background about Melissa. So first of all, Melissa is a Ohio native who, you know, after high school came to Georgia and has acclimated to our weather here. And right now, this is uh, we're in January and, you know, the weather's changing and stuff like that. And no one really cares for the cold. But she's a, a, a music study uh, graduate of Berry College. It's in Rome, Georgia. She has been in music education for three years and then switched to music business, which, you know, everybody who watches this platform, y'all know that I'm very into the independent artists getting paid and all that stuff. So we got some stuff to talk about it. Um, she also interned uh, in development for the Atlanta Opera while at Barry and went on to work in music retail after college. In 2002, Melissa was recruited to work at a business, work out a business plan. I can't read this morning for some reason. <laughs> for a new company and Music Authority was born, which was originally owned by the Martin family. She uh, married the following year, Andrew Loggins, and then they decided to purchase Music Authority and proceed to live in an apartment above Andrew's dad carpet cleaning shop for the next six years because they bought a business when, you know, most people are buying a house. So Music Authority is much more than your standard retail store. It's a place where music lovers and musicians connect and collaborate. You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, the sense of a uh, community there. The company empowers musicians to reach beyond their potential through dedicated instruction, world-class facilities, music equipment sales, rental and repair, uh, to formation of rock bands that are booked at real gigs and events to building confidence through family, expert peer support networks, and monthly community service projects. Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um... I love your background. <laughs> I, don't get, you. <laughs> I don't get to talk to that many people who are on that side of the music business. One, you know, getting the educational piece component. All right. Then going into the music space and like Music Authority does, not only selling, you know what I'm saying, services and the equipment and things of that nature, but then also providing a community where Artists can come through because uh, I was looking at, uh, I think, where I saw y'all had different uh, bands come through and play. So you're also yes. providing a platform for musicians to be heard and to help build a fan base and to really learn the business. So let's start at where, what inspired you to even go down that path? Because there is no blueprint for the music industry. Uh, no, there is not. Um, we, my background is is musical uh, throughout high school. Mm -hmm. And I had a dream when I was in high school that I wanted to have a performing arts school. Mm -hmm. My vision in high school is a little bit different than what it is here. I got to college. I studied music education and figured out that the public school system, while I have enormous respect for my friends who work in the public system, it was not for me. Mm -hmm. I, I need too much freedom of creativity and thought and and control of my own destiny, I guess, mm -hmm. that the school system didn't work out for me. So I switched to music business and I fell in love with rock concerts and rock and roll and mm -hmm. that side of everything. Um, at the time, Atlanta was a huge music hub. There was music every weekend you could find and 
amazing artists and small clubs. And I was seeing three and four shows a weekend sometimes. Mm. And so that's how I got into what I'm doing now. I had an, uh, an opportunity to uh, take over this, this facility, Music Authority. Mm-hmm. And we very early decided, my husband and I decided that we wanted it to be something special. Mm-hmm. We didn't just want to sell guitars. We wanted to inspire musicians and we built programs. So we were able to do that. I love it. Um, so do either one of y'all have any like entrepreneurial or business um, experience prior to that? Not at all. <laughs> we were very young when we started this. <laughs> so y'all basically like, you know, learning as you go. Yes. And there are things we look back and we're like, man, we probably shouldn't have done it that way. Mm-hmm. We didn't know any better. And, mm-hmm. and uh, luckily karma has not dropped us yet. <laughs> like we're, we, we have gotten through some troubling times and mm-hmm. uh, I feel like we're very successful and I'm so proud of the kids that have gone through our program and the adults who have gone through our programs and gone out there and been successful. So when did y'all actually add, like, you know what I'm saying, the teaching the kids and the adult type piece in the programs? Because I'm like, to me, that's like two different business models. Tax season is here. Maximize your refund legally with the tax office that has the experience. Barber's Tax and Credit Repair is available to assist you. Meet with any of the tax repairs that will gather some basic information and be able to set you up with the best refund possible. This includes sitting down with your preparer and navigating that process. Upon completion, you will be confident in knowing that you have maximized and gotten the best refund possible. Go ahead, get started today with a consultation and schedule your appointment. Call one 877 Seven five two five five two. Barbers Tax and Credit Repair. They are here for you. It it really is. When we first started, we had sort of a retail manager who handled the retail side of the store, and the retail mm-hmm. side of the store was originally designed to drive in business for a lessons program. Mm-hmm. I came in as the lessons administrator. That was mm-hmm. my that was my initial job here in the store. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had like six lesson studios. I think we, we had maybe less than a hundred students and maybe a dozen teachers. Like we started very small. Mm-hmm. We started very very small. And as time as it grew, we realized that the sort of the old fashioned model of teaching, which is mm-hmm. where a student comes into a lesson room and said, and the teacher says, what do you want to learn today? And we're mm-hmm. going to learn how to pay back in black or whatever song you want to learn. Mm-hmm. Was not sustainable long-term because we weren't really teaching the kids how to make music. We were teaching them how to make really cool sounds on their guitars. Yeah. Or they were mimicking. Mm-hmm. So we sat down and reworked our, our lesson plan and decided we were going to teach the language of music. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn how to play play a song, we're happy to do that. But you're also going to learn how to read music and you're going to learn how to communicate musically and you're going to learn how to work with other musicians on other instruments. And the ultimate goal is for all of our students to do work in a band. So how do you balance? Um, because getting into the music industry, regardless of the path that you take to get into it, is more of a labor of love. No one really gets in into it I'm like, oh, OK, I'm going to do this as a profession to, you know, make a living. Right. There has to be that that passion there. Um, how do you balance the passion for, you know, your love of music and the business side? It's it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie mm-hmm. uh, for for me. I, I am so passionate about live production mm-hmm. that it's not work anymore. Uh, so I, I set a very strict schedule for myself. I, my morning is for my own creativity. Okay. I work on my own projects. I get up very, very early and I'm sitting at my dining room table well before the sun comes up mm-hmm. and I work on my own projects in the morning. So I'm able to use a creative outlet. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I come into work. We don't open till 11. So I don't have to be here terribly early, mm-hmm. uh, but I come into work and I do the business part first. Mm -hmm. I take care of the accounting. I take care of ordering. I take care of problems with parents or problems with students or anything like that. And then the afternoon is time for the kids and the, and the adults. 
So I say kids, but we have a fair number of adult students who come here also that are mm-hmm. also part of these programs. Mm-hmm. And it's just having, for me, I'm a very type A person. So for me, having that schedule where I know this time I'm going to work on this and this time I'm going to work on this and this time is left for the kids. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it a lot easier for me to balance balance the different parts of my life. So is your husband involved in the business as well, or is he more of a supportive role? He is involved in the business. Uh, we are divided um, the sales floor into portions. So he handles the majority of the sales floor so I can focus on the aspects of teaching the students and mm-hmm. getting them to gigs and getting them scheduled and things like that. Mm-hmm. He handles the sales floor and he also runs a repair shop. We have a very successful uh, guitar repair shop. Okay. Um, did you, uh, so you took it over. How long have you had the business? It opened in 2002 and we purchased it from the original owners in 2004. Oh, so 20 years, 20 years. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, a lot of business don't even make it. That, <laughs> they don't even make it that far. Um, I'm like, you know, statistics for business is horrible. Um, but I get it though. There's a lot of factors involved in it. So y'all have been able to, do you feel like y'all have been able to help shape the culture of music and the music business and how it's looked upon, especially you said y'all get the students and the adults gigs, correct? Yes, we do. I feel like there's two, two answers to that. Both of them are yes. First answer is in my part of the world, in my my little piece of the music industry, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. I think we're making a difference because we're teaching our, our our musicians to be professional. They know how to talk to a, a bar owner. They know how to mm-hmm. talk to a sound production crew. They know how to be respectful. They know how to show up, do their job, get off stage. They know how to give shout outs to waiters and waitresses. Like mm-hmm. we teach them all of the right things that they need to do and so we'll go in and sometimes Mm -hmm. the adults in the room are like oh my god how old are these kids and i'm like oh they're 16 Mm -hmm. they're so professional so we're Mm -hmm. making a difference that way Mm -hmm. and and we're not the loud riotous Mm -hmm. bands that are breaking gear like we're we we treat we teach the kids to treat it like a business yeah then on the larger scale i am part of the uh, um, NAM, which is our organization for our trade organization for for music business mm-hmm. or music retail business specifically, and I've had the opportunity to speak at several NAM shows about how we are teaching our kids and how we are building these programs to support the music industry and to mm-hmm. put knowledgeable people into the industry in jobs in the industry, mm-hmm. and I feel like that has given me a platform to really make changes nationwide mm-hmm. on a, on a, on a bigger scale. Like I, f- I follow people who have embraced our program in many other States mm-hmm. or develop programs similar to ours in many other States. And they're making positive impacts there as well. Mm, okay. So y'all like, you know, y'all trendsetters a little bit. Yeah. yeah that's what's up. I love it. Um, so you said, you know, you're teaching all the right things. So what would be like, you know, three myths or three typical wrong things? Uh, It's not about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I love that. You you have to um, wrong things dress like a grown up when you go to a gig. Mm -hmm. Like don't don't dress like you're going to the skate park. Dress like a grown up. It makes a difference. I've had bands that people have refused to book because they don't dress appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, and a third one is it's all about the practice. Okay. If, if you don't do the work in the, you know, I, I've heard it said, you know, I don't get, I don't get my energy and I don't get engaged with the audience until I'm in front of the audience. That's not true. If you can't do it in the practice room, you can't mm-hmm. do it when you're on stage in front of a hundred. Yeah. People. So in your experience, have you run across very talented individuals, but, you know, they just rely on the talent and, you know, treat themselves like a diva? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a saying around here. We we teach team players. We don't teach divas. Uh-huh. I have I have uh, 
let go of students that are that are divas because what I find is if sometimes if you're so talented you can't ever get better there's a plateau mm -hmm. you can you can go as far as that talent lies but if you're not, not willing to put in the work mm -hmm. there's a limit to how far you're going to go I will mm -hmm. take a less talented student who's willing to work hard mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. Yeah, work see, ethic is so important. Okay. So then that was actually my follow-up. So would you uh, surmise that, you know, the people who are really like, you know, winning and, you know, making a career out of their craft are the ones who actually put the work in as opposed to the talented individuals? Absolutely. Um, I, as a matter of fact, one of my classes yesterday, uh, they're, a, they're one of our bands in our band program. Mm -hmm. And we have a little break right now at the beginning of the year. We've got a few weeks before we have our next gig as we sat down and we really talked about what kind of work goes into booking because they don't mm -hmm. book themselves. We have an adult who does that here mm -hmm. in the store. Uh, that's part of their job. So we sat down and we really talked about it's it's not as simple as walking into a club and saying, hey, here I am. Mm -hmm. I, let me play. It's you have to build respect and you have to build a reputation and you have to build a relationship mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of work. So we, mm -hmm. I really try to teach my students that it's, it is, it's a job. It's not, I'm going to go do this for fun. Mm -hmm. It's a job. Mm -hmm. So with the bookings, are they more based uh, Metro Atlanta or do y'all book all over the state or all over the country? We'll go just about anywhere that will have us <laughs> to mm -hmm. be honest. Uh, we have um, right now, most recently, we've been we've been pretty much in the Atlanta area, mm -hmm. which there's plenty of places here, so I mm -hmm. don't really have to go further away. But I do know we've got a couple of we're we're in conversations with a couple of places in North Carolina uh, and the Tennessee area right now. Okay, to take they'd be little road trips for the for the kids. Yeah, so um, twenty years of teaching kids, correct? Um, yes. do you have any that go on and really want to pursue music, um, in that fashion, like playing in the band as a full-time career and want oh, to yeah. become like the recording artist? Yes. I remember it's probably been nine years ago. Now I was in the car going to something. It doesn't matter where I was going, but my husband was driving all of a sudden he pulls over and I was like, what are you doing? And he mm -hmm. turns up the radio and he goes, that's my student. Mm -hmm. One of our, his students, cause he teaches for us. One of his students had gone to tell a and joined a band and they were mm -hmm. on, they were on the radio. And it was the first time I heard one of my students on the radio and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have kids that go off and do that. And, uh, it's, it just, it makes me feel like so proud of them to know that they've taken this dream, taken something that they love doing and they have made a living out of it. That's what's up. So in, in the, uh, I guess the program, do y'all have, do y'all cover like things like, you know, explaining what recording contracts are, you know, all the different ways they can make money, what's publishing, things of that nature. Yeah. It depends upon how deep you go into our program. If mm -hmm. you're, an eight-year-old who's taken piano lessons, you're probably not going to learn yeah. about recording rights. Yeah, no, but I get that. But if you're one of our, if you're one of our top-level bands or one of our songwriting students who's mm -hmm. getting to the point where you're going to be recording some of your own material, yeah, we talk about contracts. We talk about how to pick a recording studio that works for you. That's something we were talking about last night. That mm -hmm. not all recording studios are the same. Not all engineers are the same. Mm -hmm. if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a pop song, don't go to a guy who's known for doing heavy metal. It's just, exactly. that's not a good, that's not it's a good, not. good match. So we do cover those types of things. And I try to introduce them to different, different jobs within the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, there's, you know, Taylor guitars, for example, has a marketing director. That's mm -hmm. a great job in the industry. Maybe you're not playing guitar every day, but you can still be involved in the industry mm -hmm. or, you know, artist development mm -hmm, people which or, we need a lot of <laughs> exactly so i part of what we do is not just about i'm going to make you i'm going to make you the best guitar player ever and you're going to go out and you're going to be famous and you're going to make your living on the road mm -hmm. we also teach them these are other ways to work within this industry because if the love is for the industry mm -hmm. there's lots of jobs out there 
Mm -hmm. there, there are. Um, I think that it gets overlooked a whole lot because it's so the focal point is more about the star and not everything that it revolves around that. Um, so like you said, there's, I'm like, there's hundreds of jobs out there. And then with uh, social media and podcasts and all that, it's starting to even pr produce more type of jobs. I'm like, you just sit there and play your guitar and talk about your story and all that stuff, whatever, and podcast about it and all that. So it's creating, you know what I'm saying, a lot of more opportunities. Um, yes. So if you had the power to change one thing about the industry, whether it be the retail side of what you do or the music industry on the you know artist side, what would you change? Oh, On the artist side, I would encourage booking managers and clubs to give younger people more opportunities. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for years. We have a great reputation and we still have resistance to what we do. Mm -hmm. And I think if more kids had opportunities to do the things that we do, mm -hmm it would have such an incredible impact because I think more people would be, would believe that you can have a living in this industry. Mm -hmm. That would be, that would be my first, the first thing I would change is, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying every teenage band out there is ready to get on the stage mm -hmm. at vinyl in Atlanta or wherever, mm -hmm. But there are kids out there who are ready, who have amazing products. There's, mm -hmm. there are, there are bands in my community who are not associated with us, but they're out there writing their own music and they're recording their own music and they're doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. I would love to see more of those groups get more exposure and more opportunities. That would be the first thing I would, that would be the first thing I would change. Okay. I love that. Um, so with that being said, Is it the venues, like, you know, because of the clubs or whatever, that's more of an adult type scene because they want to sell the alcohol. They want to sell the things, you know what I'm saying? The vices for the adults. If you bring in underage children in or whatever, I'm like, you can't sell alcohol and stuff like that. So what kind of other venues would like need to be opened or how would that, you know, how would we go about with that process? Well, something that we've, we've been pretty successful at is even in, in venues that are selling alcohol, is we look at them and we say, what are you doing on a Sunday afternoon at two o'clock? Okay. And they're like, well, we're open, but we don't really have much going on. I said, so mm -hmm. how about you give us a chance and let us come in on a Sunday afternoon at two o'clock? Mm -hmm. You're not making much in sales as it is. So anything we bring in is going to be icing on your cake. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to give you more, more sales. Mm -hmm. Let us just see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And And for us, it's it's easy because usually when we book like that, we're booking a three hour gig and I'm bringing two bands. Mm -hmm. So that's 10 kids mm -hmm. and all, all of their parents and then their parents are going to bring friends. And so very quickly we fill venues up. It, mm -hmm. it is it's not unusual for us to go somewhere and then be understaffed because they don't expect us to bring the type of people we do. Mm -hmm. I, I realize not every band is going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think if if there was more opportunities like that for more mm -hmm. bands or if more bands knew how to work on opportunities like that, mm -hmm. I just think it would, it would feed, feed the reality that this, that you can, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a day job too, but you can do this. Yeah. I imagine, you know, the venues, but, uh, that particular, like a show at two and you said, uh, three hours, so two to five, you're packing a house and you're at least able to sell food because I, I believe you can't sell alcohol while the kids are in the venue. Um, if I'm not mistaken, but like food would be an option. Sure. In, in our area, you can sell alcohol within the venue mm -hmm. while there are teens there. Mm -hmm. When it becomes more alcohol than there is food, then there's a problem. I it. gotcha. So you got to keep the balance. It's, it's about the balance. Yes. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, well, I just start doing packages then. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, drink, it's, no, you got to, you got to get two combos. Of food. <laughs> yeah. No, we need to, we need to sell more, more French fries and, and less beers, but yeah. it, 
it, it, you, we can be in those venues that are selling alcohol. Okay, great. Um, so are the kids compensated or is it more of, you know what I'm saying, experience learning for them? For them, it's more of an experience. Um, they they pay a, the way our, our top program works is they pay a lower tuition rate mm. and then anything we make offsets that lower tuition rate. Okay, so there's gotcha. pressure on us to make sure we're booking them gigs mm -hmm. so that we're making the income to pay the staff and pay the teachers and every mm -hmm. all the cost that goes into having a band. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids aren't necessarily bearing, bearing the brunt of all of that. It's, it's no. on our shoulders. Okay. Um, what's been the biggest lesson you have learned as being a business owner? The biggest lesson I have learned is um, I got to think of how to word this in, in a nice way. <laughs> uh, know, who you, know who you're trusting. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure all businesses have been taken advantage of at some point in time. Um, yeah. We have. And so that has really taught me that my business is my business mm -hmm. and I need to run it like a business. And no matter mm -hmm. how good of a friend you are, yeah, um, you, we you you still have to pay for your lessons. Um, yeah, you still have to play by the rules. I definitely understand that. Um, you've been doing this for so long. Have you gotten to the point to where you've inspired others who like looked up to you because you're going out on this venture in the beginning, right? And you have no idea what you're about to accomplish, or even you know what I'm saying if you're being in business within five years. So have you gotten to the point to where people come up to you and be like, you know what? I saw your path. I got inspired. I started my path. Yes. Uh, that's with the larger platform of, of, of NAM, um, mm -hmm. our trade, trade organization. Yes, absolutely. I have talked to people who have come to me and said, I saw you talk four years ago and I thought I was going to lose my lose my business because I didn't know what I was doing. And I implemented some of the things that you did. And now we're doing better than ever. And I'm so inspired. And that's, that's moving to me because that, that tells me that the music authority story is going on somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I forgot to mention that uh, music authority has been recognized as one of the top 100 music stories in the world, eight years running. Did y'all get 2023 as well, or have they not put in the information out yet? Yes, we did. Uh, that oh. that went out just a week or so ago. So yes, so congratulations! Nine years running. Thank you. Yes, that 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 is amazing. Um, and I, I believe you uh you wrote a book as well, correct? Yes, I I write I write under a pen name. Um, mm -hmm. but I do I, everything I do here is so real. I write fantasy, <laughs> I write urban fantasy, vampires in North Georgia. That's what I write. <laughs> vampires of North Georgia. Okay. Yes. So how, how has that been going for you? And like, you know, what, what inspired, you know what I'm saying, to do that? Because I'm like, you're dealing with a lot already. Um, so, you know, to add one more thing to your list seems like, you know, it's like the whirlwind of things. That is my creative outlet. I, I have written since I've been in elementary school. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just little short stories back then. I still have notebooks full of short stories from way back then. Uh, but when I got to college, I, I really needed an outlet. I was so immersed in music all the time because I was a music major that I just needed something that wasn't music. And mm -hmm. I started writing. That was back in the AOL days. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my 40s. So um, <laughs> they had they had these these writing boards where they would challenge you would challenge each other to to write. And mm -hmm. I got I started writing a series through these message boards that were that are about writing uh, mm -hmm. about these vampires and they stayed with me. And so when I was in my thirties, I went back and rewrote a lot of that into, into novels, into okay. actual physical novels. And that's how I, that's how I got my started, my start writing. It, it was, that. yeah, it was, it was a, I, it was an, exercise for me mm -hmm. at first but then it became a world that i could disappear into 
I have a bad day at work. I go home and I work on my, I work on my writing. Yeah. But how has that turned out for you as far as are people receiving the stories and stuff and supporting and things of that nature? Yes. Uh, in my vampire series, I have five novels out now. Oh, wow. Uh, I released my most recent one in February of last year. Okay. I, I don't know when my next one's coming out. Uh, I had, I had cancer in 2022 and it slowed my writing down. Oh, a sorry little to bit. hear. Are you, have you gotten over the cancer or? Yes, I'm in remission. Okay, I'm doing very, very well. Congratulations. Good. Thank you. And as, but as far as the writing goes, it's, it's, I have readers. I have a little, I have a little fan club in Texas. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how they found me, but they're there. Uh-huh. And it's, it's, it's super cool to know that they're there. Yeah. And I have local readers too, but I, it's, mm-hmm. They're not, I'm not selling millions of copies, but I'm selling enough copies to make me happy. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's all about. I think, you know, it's more about the connecting with people and you, you know what I'm saying? The impact that you have on people's lives. Um, Cause like you said, you use it as a, a creator's outlet. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't doing it for like the business model of let me go out here and sell a million copies. So anything that you do is authentic, genuine, well-received. And, you know, I guess the support that it's supposed to get. Right. It's it's a lot like what I, I teach my students about songwriting. Mm-hmm. Write the song that makes you happy. Don't write the song you think is going to sell. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I, uh, that's what I want to ask, too. So y- y'all are working on, uh, you know, the kids pr- um, making their own music, correct? And doing yes. that. Do they get the opportunity to record <laughs> and put it out or anything? And then if so, how does that work? Are they like, you know, receiving all the money on their end or? We... We have not put out anything that's really made a lot of money from our side. Mm-hmm. The way it generally generally works, let me mm-hmm. um, the way it generally works is if you're a songwriting student, mm-hmm. a lot of them record on their own. Like we'll help hook them up to a, a recording studio if they need it. But okay. it's so easy to record on your own now. Yeah, it is. A, most of them, most of them just borrow one of our studios come mm-hmm. in at an early time mm-hmm. i'm sorry can you hear that i can I'm but in you're, you're in a business i'm like okay. that's a great <laughs> thing. you know what i said the phone ringing that means money on the other line i just wanted to pause for a second until it was done <laughs> um so they'll they'll do it on their own and they'll release things on their own and we've we've had some students who have been quite successful working mm-hmm. on working on their own material mm-hmm. as far as our bands go we have recorded with them. We're talking about one with one of our other bands right now about doing some recording of material. Mm-hmm. Those we don't really release. Like we don't we don't put them on Spotify or we don't mm-hmm. we don't put them out. They're they're more of a learning process for the students. Gotcha. And then if the students want to go on and write more on their own, we encourage that. Okay. I don't see we, you. we want them mm-hmm. we want them to be self-sufficient we don't want them to be dependent upon us yeah no i definitely get that um so i guess y'all wouldn't uh y'all are not going to explore the realm of like you know label or label type services or things or anything like that that is not our plan at this time no okay yeah i'm like it's, uh, it gets ugly <laughs> i've done it <laughs> yeah no i i did some work doing that when I, before music authority existed, when I was still in college Uh as part of my music business degree. And that is, that is not where I am excited and passionate. That was, that was work and that was a job. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we, we would rather encourage kids to go out and to find those and to find management and things like that on, on their own or with our help and Mm -hmm. work with people outside of here. Our, our goals are a little bit different than that. Yeah, and no, I definitely understand that. And no, I love it because, uh, like I said, it feels like I really poured back into the community and with the history that you have. I imagine that now you probably don't have to do it like a whole lot of heavy uh, recruiting that word of mouth and through your relationships, people are just sending people your way. Yeah, I, I do very little advertising. Mm hmm. Most of our students come because they know somebody else who has come to us. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, great work. You know what I'm saying? Sales itself. So uh, I'm trying to think, is, is there anything that we didn't get to cover that you wanted to talk about? 
No, I think we, we talked a lot. I, I could talk about my kids all day long. I, and, and again, I say kids, <laughs> but I have adults too. It's uh -huh. not just, it's not just youth, Yeah. but I, I, I love what I do. It's, it's not really a job. Like I say, I come to work, but it's not really work. Yeah, no, I definitely understand it. I love, I love what I do and it's uh, this sense of freedom and you get to tap into like, you know, creativity and explore things and do things that are like cutting edge and things of that nature that most people, you know what I'm saying, don't even get to do. Um, so I love it. And I'm, I actually, I uh, definitely want to come up there and, you know, and just visit and see the facility and how everything looks like. Um, oh yeah, actually, absolutely. We'd love to have you. Well, uh, let's let everybody know if, you know, they're interested in, if they want to support, you know, the store, they want to, learn more about the program, anything, even, you know, if they want to, you know, get some novels and stuff, where do people need to go? Uh, you can find us at musicauthorityinc.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Music Authority Inc. And uh, if you want to support us or our kids, just reach out. We're always looking for places to come play. And you can find my novels on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your time, ma'am. Thank you. And I, uh, definitely, like I said, I, I want to come up there sometime, uh, you know, I'll, I'll wait till you get a little bit uh, hotter. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait for the weather to pass. It's it's pretty cold exactly. this morning. Um, oh, do you have any plans uh, for, like, doing any more performances uh, in store or within the venue like I saw in the past? Yes. We, let me see, our next big show right now that would be um, like fun for the fun for the general public is April 13th and 14th. All of mm -hmm. our rock bands are going to be doing, doing a rock concert. And then May, I believe it's the 11th. I'm mm -hmm. going to check really quick while you're, while I'm talking. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one, that's actually on my birthday. It's my uh, 13th. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll have all of our kids playing. And then on May 18th or 11th, I was right. May 11th, we do a show called parking lot rock mm -hmm. where we clear out our parking lot and we bring in food trucks and we do mm -hmm. just this big outdoor concert and it's so much fun. 